The Magic Win! The Magic Win, baby! The Orlando Magic defeat the Cleveland Cavaliers 116 to 109. And man, it feels fine to come out of the All-Star break with a W. What's up out there, Second Cousins? I'm happy to be joined for this recap by my cousin, Jason the Peach. And we've got Second Cousin in with us today, Jay. I'm Kyle. Before we get into this tonight, I do want to remind everyone about Court Cousins Night less than a month away, March 21st. We're going to be down in the city beautiful watching our Orlando Magic take on the Pelicans, and we hope that you'll join us. You can get in on the link. It's going to be in the description. Ticket discount. We're doing tons of giveaways. Everyone's going to walk away with something. We're going on the court after to cut down the net. It's going to be a good time. And man, someone that had a good time tonight. Moritz Wagner. Oh, yes, the Wonder Kid plays a German drinking song for the man. Yes. Moritz Wagner and the bench mob outscored the Cleveland Cavaliers 63. I want to make sure I get this right. 63 to 24. Again, led by the German sensation, Moritz Wagner. He had 22 points on 7 of 12 from the field, 7 boards to go along with it. And I was happy to see a guy that I was worried about. Cole Anthony, I just wrote on OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can go check it out, gentlemen, that Cole's in a precarious spot. He has not been playing well, and there's not as many minutes for him to shoot himself out of a slump. But tonight, he came through with another good performance 13 points on 6 of 8, 6 assists to add to that. Coach Mosley stuck with him as the hot hand and Moritz, to his credit, all the way to the end of the game. Cole came out a little before. No, Cole all the way to the end of the game. Both of those guys earned it and finished the game. It was it was nice. There was a couple moments here where I was a little bit worried. Coach Mosley took J.I. out, and then the, the Cleveland Cavs ran on a run right there. But uh, we had enough to hold off the Cavs and get a big victory out of the all-star break. Peach, what were some of your takeaways on this one, sir? My first takeaway is my man became a little bit of a black hole. <laughs> because, yeah, Call me Carmelo Anthony, baby. Your, yeah, you're used to doing these wrap-ups by yourself. Totally get it. A little long-winded at the beginning. It's cool, <laughs> but you got help off the bench today, much like the Orlando Magic does. Jay and I are here to help. Uh, and, man, I was impressed with the addition of Joe Ingles and Cole Anthony really stepping up. And, of course, you already gave Moritz the props, but mm -hmm. it's hard to give props to a guy with a creepy mustache like that, right? Um, <laughs> also, I feel like Cole's growing the hair back, and then for some reason now AB has gotten rid of his amazing spongy kind of strange mane. I, a lot of hair issues on the on the, on the on the bench for the guys. Um, somebody needs to get him a, uh, one of those man lawnmower things. Uh, they, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I, but but the play was excellent, and it particularly off the bench because our offensive our, uh, starters really didn't produce more than 14 points from Franz. I mean, 12 from Paulo. Usually, if that's all those two guys are scoring, they probably don't win the game. But mm. because of the bench, we got things done. And the Cavs, let's be honest, they, uh, they didn't impress me. We can talk about them later. Jay, what were your thoughts? Dude. Thank you guys for having me on here with you guys, um, first and foremost. And man, we're since we're on the topic of hair, man, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna call it. It starts with the headband, bro. And mm -hmm. who had a headband on tonight? Jonathan Isaac. So he, he's gonna have braids soon. <laughs> yeah, there's you know as long I, as he learns how to have some offensive touch. I'm hey, he's got that like fun. Mike, you know that like Mike he's here to finish. I, you know, so, uh, all right, we're just, apparently this is a hair podcast today. This is a hair recap. This is big. This is important news in the Orlando Magic community. I mean, to be fair, Orlando Magic Twitter is a buzz about Anthony Black's braids. I don't know the how people are feeling, but I'm, I'm thinking, guys, this is kind of just like a maybe like that that tryst that you had when you were younger with that lady who you knew really wasn't good for you long term but it was just like a hot and heavy thing but you you were going to go back to your true love sometime later i th i think he's got to go back to the signature look but uh all jokes aside anthony black is looking really good man i mean he i mean he didn't really necessarily fill up the stat sheet i'll bring up his uh stat line right now um, he had nine points on three of seven shooting, one of two from beyond the arc, three boards, two assists, 
but he's plus 21. He just gives you that hustle defense. And, and as like a 6'8", 6'9", guard out there on the perimeter, it's tough for these smaller guards to get around him. Myself, you know, I'm, I'm a Markaholic, all right? I'm a Markel Fultz fan. I need some more Markel Fultz. But coming into this game, the big news for me was Markel Fultz sitting? Injury maintenance? I mean, isn't that – we just – wasn't the whole all-star break? Isn't that when you do the maintenance on the injury? Because we just had the – we had the vacation just there, Markel. And I believe he sat out the game before the break too along with Gary Harris. So he's had – almost a couple weeks here to to get that right. And again, we see it popping up with um, knee maintenance as it's uh, cited on the injury report. And that has me obviously very concerned. But with, with A.B. playing the way he is, it's, it's okay. You know, it, the team depth is going to make up for that. It, it's just unfortunate to see again – Markel being injured, don't want to talk too much on that because that's more of a negative, and there was a lot of good to talk about um, here. Congrats, Je- uh, Jeff Turner, on being a grandpa, by the way. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of uh, – I didn't really like much of what I saw at A.B. in this game. He was – Really? Uh, yeah, he, he was there. I mean, he got burned a few times by Garland that I'm just like, all right, he's going to – he's young, obviously. I'm still grading him on a, on a wicked curve. Um, I know the best is yet to come from him. But mm-hmm. if I was doing this wrap-up by myself, I don't think I would have mentioned him at all, to be honest. He was there. He didn't hurt us. Obviously, he was part of the plus. But it was just a good team win. I feel like everybody did stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, no one was really like – in the way or hindering our ability to do anything. So overall, it was just pretty solid. Lots of lots of fouls. Lots of lots of Moritz bullying. Yeah, Mobley's tiny scrawny body down there. Can we get that guy a steak? What's up? <laughs> lots of fouls that were not called in favor of Paolo too. So mm-hmm. like you know, since you're mentioning that, um, I think it's pretty insane. So. Uh, one of the things that Kyle mentioned initially, he was talking about like the stat lines. And one of the things that I have kind of seen just throughout every, you know, Magic Twitter, everything going on, it's like the Magic is a team that every almost everybody likes to pay attention to those stat lines, but like those players contribute much more than like what their stat line speaks for them, right? So it's like just maybe the energy that they bring. So it's, I mean, but what is crazy, if you are going to focus on the stat lines, is on that plus and minus side, Mm -hmm. all of our starters were in the minus, and Mm. that bench really, really took us, you know, to that W tonight. No, absolutely. The the bench was was why we won the game. There were some interesting calls. I don't want to focus too much on the Zebras, but... I, can someone explain this to me? I mean, I'm not a basketball expert over here. Um, but so there was a play where Mobley goes through the, the lane in the third. He kind of trips. I don't know if he did get tripped or if there was a foul. And because he was gathering, they allowed him to shoot, even though he hadn't made any shooting it. motion, yeah. which I, I don't really get that because if you're gathering, you can still pass after you gather. I Shouldn't you have to be in a shooting motion? And then after that, um, Moritz gets a tech on the next play for pointing out our bench to say review the call. So I don't know if Scott Foster just had one out for us tonight. He does not like Paulo Bancaro. As you said, Jay, Like Paulo has been getting no calls. This is a guy at the beginning of the year who was one of the league leaders in getting to the line, and I'm kind of noticing that the refs aren't giving him as much as they were at the beginning of the year. I don't understand that. Maybe he needs to... You know, not he. He's a be, He's a beef. He, you know, he's a beefy boy. So he's taking contact. Maybe he needs to be more like Mobley and Jared Allen out there tonight. That looked like uh, they were they would blow uh, fold over if there was a strong wind that came through. Because as you said, Peach mm. Moritz was making them look tiny. Hmm. I thought Jared Allen played okay, but Evan yeah. Mobley definitely uh, lost respect with me tonight. Um, despite you know having a decent game in the in the stat sheet, but yeah. just his. 
he's walking, traveling every play, every dribble, his hand goes under the ball. I mean, just, I mean, I know they don't really call a lot of stuff, but it's yeah. like, this is outrageous to the point where it's like, somebody needs to stop this man. Cause if you stop letting him cheat, he's probably a below average player. When I was really looking at this one, like, obviously I felt like, as I thought about it more when, especially while you guys were talking, of course our bench is going to go in and outplay the Cavs bench. They're starting some of their bench. Like you can't tell me Isaac Okoro and Max Spruce are who you want in your starting lineup. So, I mean, like, obviously when you start to get to the bench guys, you're like, ah, well, these guys, we just got to give them some minutes. And like, you know, we have some guys that would probably start on some teams uh, on our bench. I mean, I'm so excited for Moritz Wagner. I think maybe more than any other Orlando magic player, This is going to sound weird, but once the playoffs hit and the magic are in it, right? As a playoff watcher, how many times do you like see guys on teams like Muppet Max Strauss, right? Not a great player, but a solid role dude on a team that was on TV all the time. And he parlays it into a big contract that you get. That's how you get to know all the other guys, the household names, the guys you see in the clips, the Paulos, the Franzes, people are knowing those guys. They're not going to know Moritz Vogt. They're going to be like, Oh, Franz is a brother. Yeah. And he balls. (laughs) <laughs> right. So you're going to see it when it comes to playoff time, because that guy ratchets it up for every game. So when it becomes a playoffs, I actually fear for the lives of anyone that stands in the lane when the German hammers coming through. So like, he's one of those guys that like, I'm like, I want the national media to see him. I want people to know that, that Franz has a brother and that he can lead us in scoring in a game. We win mm-hmm. against another playoff team. So I, I'm, I'm excited you, for that for him. Do you actually, though? Because here's what's going to happen. He's going to start to get them offers again. And ah. is, he going to, is he going to be loyal and stay with his brother and the team that he enjoys playing with? Or is he going to go for the bag? You know, so... I, kind of, I, uh, I see what I see what you're saying. Tough. I see what you're saying though. For two reasons, I think he would he would stick around um, with his nice crumb catcher, that crumb stash. You know, some of that facial fur that he's rocking nowadays. I think that would stay around because at the end of the game interview, the vibes are immaculate here, and th- and that's just a blessing that we have on this team. It's a testament to the front office. It's a testament to Coach Mosley. But you know, Moritz was talking about how. Hey, it's five guys out there. It was my turn tonight. I just got lucky. He saw, he said it was a it's a privilege to play for this team. I think he loves to play for this team. Loves playing with his brother. That's obviously something that we have. And I think he knows maybe he should that uh, although, you know, maybe I'm going to eat this these comments, but he's overpaid right now from what he would have got on the market in the summer. Um his production is is equal to what he's getting paid, but I think if he would have gone onto the free market, he would not have gotten what we gave him. Um, what was it two for? I got to look it up. I don't want to misquote it, but you know, I, I see what you're saying, Jay. Like, are we going to have a Miami situation where they go deep, and then you have Max Struess who gets signed, Gabe Vincent that gets signed? I'm I'm interested to see how the roster construction continues to play out here with this very young squad as decisions hey, are um, going to have to be made on that on that note i just want to say that there was a, a local mavericks podcast that approached me and they offered me about 250 bucks an episode to join their podcast <laughs> i said no i said no because at the end of the day you gotta stay with your blood you gotta stay with your family <laughs> so if you live your life a quarter mile over time or you're on this podcast it's all about family <laughs> Orlando Magic. Um, okay, so just like kind of big picture stuff now as I look up uh, Moritz Wagner's contract. He's, um, yeah, $8 million. That's not actually necessarily overpay. That's probably fair. Two years, $18 million. Yeah, but Moritz can also have a – he can also have a game where he goes in there. Right. He's only – like, so, I mean, these, this is one of those good games that like raises his overall average, but he, it's not always consistent with him. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he, he was up for like six man of the year talk in the beginning of the year and that's cooled off because, um, you know, he's, he hasn't always had great games, but that's kind of like what he talks about. There's, that's what's 
awesome about this team. That's what's awesome about watching this team. There are so many of those guys that play their role so well, you never know who's going to step up and have a big game. You saw Anthony Black have a huge game when uh, they played against the Dallas Mavericks. Tonight was Moritz Wagner. Of course, we're going to have nights from our, our big two, but like Jalen has big nights. Gary Harris will step up all of a sudden and have you know, 12, 14 points sometimes. So it's, it's great to see the camaraderie of this team and, and the fact that they're sharing the ball. Definitely tonight, um, the Cavs just turned the ball over a shit ton. That was forced, I think, a lot in part because of our defense, but they definitely were missing Donovan Mitchell. They have 19 turnovers uh, that – end up in 28 points so that is uh that's something to see uh, it was surprising though you know normally we got to win points in the paint we did not uh the boards were even but in a game where we don't win points in the paint you normally don't feel like the magic are gonna win except that tonight ladies and gentlemen let mark it down let's have a round of applause we shoot 56 percent from beyond the arc are you kidding me are you kidding me Jeff Weltman says, and you said we needed shooting at the trade deadline. <laughs> so that was going to be my question. I, li I literally wrote that down, man. I was like, everybody talks about how the Magic needs shooting, man, and it's insane. I think it's just a matter of, like, just repetition and just, like, working on it, man. But we have the people to do some awesome shots. They just, you know, got to put put in the work during the offseason. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I think Wendell is our, like, top shooter. It's kind of nuts when you You're think right. about it, but like over forty percent. Yeah, and Jalen's yeah, been we awesome. We'll shoot more three pointers than than the other team. So when we do, right. you got to figure we won that game, right? Because yeah. that doesn't happen much. It seems like our offense isn't based on shooting the three. I felt like we made of those fourteen three pointers we had. I think there was about four or five in the first quarter. And then it kind of like tailed off a little bit. It's almost, mm. it feels like an afterthought to our offense, which is okay if you're getting inside. When they switched the zone in the second half, it kind of jammed us up a little bit. But I did, they did a good job with the ball movement to, yeah. get, to get over that hump. Definitely some really nice passing. And, and yeah, we, it's not a huge part of our offense because normally our offense is points in the paint and getting to the line. But we only shot 18 free throws, they shot 26 tonight. Um, they beat us in points in the paint. So when you look at that, like I would not expect us to win that game. So it's a really good thing that we outscored them. We got four more three-pointers than them tonight, and that ends up kind of being the difference in the game along with the really good ball movement. To your point, Jay, I mean, I just did a, a five things to look forward to in the second half for Bleacher Report. Y'all can go check that out. But I talked about the shooting and the consistency. And like you said, it's – I think Weltman in the front office think that the shooting is already here. You know, there wasn't any big move that we could have gotten out there, maybe except for Buddy Heald, who's like a high volume guy. But we don't know what, what the machinations of that negotiation were. Um, but I, everything else would have been kind of a lateral move. There wasn't anyone else that's like that much better than Jalen Suggs or Gary Harris necessarily. Um, and Jalen Suggs has way more upside on in, in his offensive arsenal, and especially on the defensive side of the ball. But in his last 10 games or 15 games, Jalen Suggs is like over 40% from beyond the arc. Gary Harris is like 38% from three since he's come to the Magic. Joe Ingles, 40% from beyond the arc. As you said, Wendell Carter is shooting 40% from beyond the arc. We've got guys like Caleb Houston who's got maybe the prettiest shot in the league from beyond the arc coming off the bench. So... Anthony Black, a guy that I didn't think could shoot the beginning of this year, has been shooting like high 30%. So the the shooting is here. It's more about the consistency, and we've had so many injury troubles. That's what, again, I don't want to make it all about injuries. That's what bugs me about Markel being out again. It's just another instance of where we're not getting the consistency with our rotations. And I'm just that's the only thing that worries me. But knock on wood, we can sustain a little nick here and – Anything, you know, little small things here and there, just not the big injury that takes someone out of the lineup for a while. Any I last thoughts? I understand that you're a big Markel fan, my yeah, guy. But I am. if you I'm about, to, boss, I'm about to go, you could there. go ahead and you could go ahead and sell that stock. And I think I told you that a while back, but I'd go ahead and sell that stock because I think it is time to get out. Well, you can well, still have a little bit add, of money there. I was just about to ask you, how much longer are you willing to put up with it? I'm not. No, yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah, I'm talking. I'm talking about the the fans. This this could be this could be a good uh, 
next episode talking point maybe it deserves a little bit um it deserves a little bit more than just in this recap but uh i think it all depends on why does my camera keep doing that i think it all depends on the contract you know is he willing to take kind of like backup money because if he does and then he gets healthy that's kind of like what you're seeing could see with ji you know if if these guys because of their injury history and because of the loyalty the organization has shown to them are are willing to to you know agree and sign for what would be kind of backup money and they get healthy at the right time in a playoff run that's dangerous like cuz then you have guys on backup money that are playing like high level starters i mean Jonathan Isaac playing like a defensive player of the year candidate but I don't want to go too big into that. Let, let's talk about that on the next episode. Eastern Conference standings, guys. Big win tonight. Uh, I think the next seven games are against teams that are under 500, but some of them have been playing well. Right now, the Magic are in seventh place. Uh, we're ahead of the Heat now with this win because of the win percentage, and we are half a game back on the Pacers in sixth place. And this is it, what, two and a half games back of the 76ers who are now without Embiid I think they're going to tumble and as long as we stay consistent I don't know I I I think sixth place is uh is within the reach what say you gentlemen the Cavaliers how are the Cavaliers that good they're in the second in second place (laughs) that's crazy yeah I mean uh, that's the that's the difference that uh, Donovan Mitchell makes on the court I think yeah um but they just didn't look quite together um we definitely looked more rested and all those all those guys, you know, that's where the work of the continuity comes into it, where it's like you're saying, you know, we have the shooters on this team. But, you know, yeah, once teams playing together longer, they do better. Mm-hmm. And that's that was the biggest difference of that game tonight was just that was all around team wins. So for me, you just keep it keep it going like this. And some of these teams are not going to be able to compete. We're playing where our schedule is a lot more favorable in the second half i feel like we're going to pile up wins and some of these teams are going to struggle to figure out who's who's their face like especially the sixers like you said without Embiid, are they going to be able to play at a top six in the eastern conference level i i I don't think so jay any last words on this one before we head out yeah um i definitely think six is within reach Uh, if the uh philadelphia 76ers do keep falling down. I mean, it, there's really no word on when Embiid's going to come back. He's pretty much going to be out long term. So, mm-hmm. you know, I would even say, depending on what the Indiana Pacers schedule looks like, we might be able to flip flop with them, and we might pull up in that in that fifth spot. Um, ultimately, it's I would think it's kind of like a it might be a strategic move depending on who you want to play. Maybe who who we want to play. Yeah, yeah kind of. I think it would be strategic. I mean. Yeah, I was going to say something else, but we'll go. We'll save it for the next one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> or it's something you didn't want to jinx, which is totally fine as well. No, oh, no, no, man. I just think depending on how strategic we want to play, listen, I'm a, I'm a Jet Howard guy. I don't think we should have, you know, we, I don't think we need to be sending him back and forth like that. We need to let him play. So mm. Mm. get him some minutes. That's why I said we could talk. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's see. Hopefully the, the wins start continue Ooh. to pile up. <laughs> hopefully if we're led by moritz with the new flavor saver the new facial furniture he's got on the lady tickler if he keeps playing like this with that new mustache i'm just bringing out all the mustache no uh lip cardigan there you go lip cardigan uh then we're we're in good hands if the bench continues to play like this. Get your tickets for Court Cousins Night. The link is going to be in the description. Hope to see you all there. Jay, Jason, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you soon. Peace out, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks for coming.